Hi again, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. So a few days ago, I showed you this Oceanus watch that I just purchased. And, uh, you know, there are a couple things about it that I didn't tell you in that video. And I think they're kind of cool. So uh, let's just talk about, you know, it's a very simple watch, just the, the three hands and the little date window there. And most of the time, it's just going to run like a regular old clock and doesn't do anything too extraordinary. You just tick, tick, tick every second. But what happens when it's time to uh, advance the date, you know, from one day to the next? What does it do? It actually looks kind of cool. Now, um, it has... A, what looks like the same kind of date window you would find on mechanical automatic watches, even some of the less expensive court watches with a little date window there. But this one behaves just a little bit differently because it has that advanced, uh, you know, engineering inside, a nice neat motor to, to separately operate all the hands and everything. So uh, let's just show you what happens when the date advances right at midnight. So that's kind of cool. It happens right there. It only takes about uh, two and a half seconds to skip ahead to the next date. And very simple. If you're not looking at the watch right at midnight, you're not going to see that happen. It's just going to be a nice watch that just quietly does its thing. Right? But now this watch is a little bit smarter than some of my other watches that have a little date window there. This one knows the difference between a month that only has 30 days and a month that has 31 days. So if it's the last day of a 30-day month and you reach midnight and it has to advance to the first of the month, well, this one will go ahead and advance two dates forward to get to the, the number one again. And this is what that looks like. So there, now that only takes about five seconds to complete that. And again, if you're not looking at it, you're going to miss that. And so uh, naturally, you're probably wondering, okay, what about uh, uh, the shortest month around? What if what it's February and it's only 28 days? What does it do then to advance to the 1st of March? Let me show you what that looks like. And as you can see, it takes just about 10 seconds, a little bit longer than 10 seconds, to uh, move four spaces ahead from the 28 to the number one again. So that's pretty cool. And again, if you're not looking right at the watch at midnight, you're going to miss that. So it, now, compared to some of my other watches that do that, uh, you know, it might take an hour to advance just one date, or it might take, um, for, for a watch like this, it has a day and date window it might take a few hours to complete that whole uh, you know, transition from one date to the next. So it's pretty cool that this happens like this. Now, now, now this makes me think of what about one other thing? What does this watch do when it's time to move the clock ahead one hour or back one hour because of changes associated with daylight saving time or summertime? So I manually set this to the, the time and date when it's supposed to advance one hour for the beginning of daylight saving time. And this is what that would look like at two o'clock in the morning. Again, now that was really fast. That was less than one second. That was about half a second to go ahead one hour. Now, what about in the fall when we go back to standard time? What does it look like at two o'clock in the morning when this, you know, makes that switch back? It looks like this. And for whatever reason, it takes a little bit longer for that hour hand to go back one hour than to go forward one hour, but that's what it does. Now, this tells me something, however. See, I, I manually set it to do that. It did not receive information from the atomic clock source to tell it to do that. I just manually set the date and the time, and it was pre-programmed to make that change at that time. Okay, so it's telling me there's a fail safe in there, even if you're not within range of some atomic time source, these multi-band six transmitters that are out there, um, it's gonna make that change anyway if you have it set to automatically change for daylight saving time. So it, it, there's a schedule pre-programmed into this watch to make that change. 
And what this tells me is that if uh, local governments in these different time zones decide to change the schedule for when daylight saving time is supposed to start and when it's supposed to end, then the watch is going to make that switch at 2 o'clock in the morning anyway on, based on the schedule that's already in the watch, right? And then it's going to try to receive atomic time information and, and correct itself. So it's, it's going to work out. But again, if, if those rules for when daylight saving time stops and, and starts, if those rules change, then the watch is going to behave a little bit differently than you might expect because, you know, the watch doesn't know that governments might make those changes. Now, um, here in the United States, there's, uh, there's a move afoot to leave us on daylight saving time year round and not be switching back and forth here in the continental United States. So if that happens, then I would go in here and I would set this to stay on daylight saving time year round. And then, you know, there would be no change. But uh, we'll see, we'll see how that shakes out. That's something for later on. Uh, that's something, you know, they're talking about it because of course, people physically don't like to have to adjust their sleep schedule twice a year to, to adjust for this daylight saving time thing. But I think the one thing that is going to be more of a factor now than it was the last time they did anything to change daylight saving time. Uh, there are a lot more devices out there that are already pre-programmed to change for daylight saving time based on what the rules have been for, I don't know, about 20 years or so at this point. So, you know, your smartphone, maybe it'll get an update in, in the, the firmware um, and, and then it'll know about the new schedule if they change it or uh, other computer devices and things. But there are other devices that are not necessarily connected to the internet and those devices might be goofed up if they, if they I don't know, this is something to, to keep in mind. But anyway, I just really wanted to show you how cool it is and how quickly and how really smoothly this watch makes changes for the date and for daylight saving time and uh, so I look forward to just, you know, sleeping through those changes as they happen in the future. But in case you sleep through it, now you know what that would look like if you were paying attention at midnight or at two in the morning to what this cool Oceanus watch can do. Now, I have other uh, analog G-Shock watches and Casio watches um, that are multiband six, and they are not programmed to change themselves by default, whether or not the uh, atomic time data tells them to. Okay, so this is unique in that respect. But again, this one's gonna correct itself. It will try to receive atomic time information uh, no matter what it's doing. And these other ones will correct themselves based on they're gonna wait until the atomic time you know, transmitter broadcast tells them to change and that's when they're going to do it, but not by default and not when I manually set them to some time, uh, they're not gonna know it's time to do daylight saving time because they're waiting for the multi-band six instructions to do that. So anyway, that's all I wanted to show you for right now. I, I think uh, this Oceanus watch is really cool. Uh, so if you're thinking about getting one, I'm just trying to show you everything I know about this Oceanus watch so you can make up your mind uh, whether you want one or not. And that's what I'm doing here on The Good Timekeeping Show. I hope you'll join me for the next episode, which is coming very soon.